All right, today I'm going to go over carabiner elements. Carabiner element. Carabiner. All right, today I'm going to go over Carabiner Elements. It's an awesome free open source keyboard customizer for Mac OS. It basically intercepts any key you press on your keyboard and allows you to do other things. Uh, there are many modifications you can make. There's simple modifications and complex modifications. I'll show you how to use both types and how to create them, but first let's uh, install it. So you can go to their website and download it like this, or you can install it with Homebrew with this command here. If you don't know what Homebrew is, I have another video on that if you wanna check it out. So once you get your beaner elements installed, you technically have two apps, I guess. You have the event viewer, and then you have the preferences pane. Let's take a quick look at the event viewer first. So the main tab here shows events. For example, if I press the K key down, you'll see this. If I release the K key, you'll see this. You have the key code, the event type, and the name, and miscellaneous, which we will go over later. And frontmost application, this will show you, well, the frontmost application and information about it, mainly the bundle identifier, which you can use inside of modifications. So for example, if I open up VS Code, you'll see that its bundle identifier is here and you can use this in your modifications so that maybe one of these keys do something special only if you're using Visual Studio Code. Otherwise, it's a normal key or something like that. Um, variables are a bit complicated. We'll go over that in the next video. Devices, this is all the information about all the keyboards and mice and anything that can send a signal to your computer. And then preferences, you can just force Event Viewer to be on top of all the windows so it won't go behind any window. You can also show Event Viewer in all spaces. So if I switch to space, um, desktop three, it would follow me there. All right, now to the preferences app. This is where you do most of your modifications. So simple modifications are basically remapping one key to another key or to a function. So I could remap caps lock to escape or escape, I can make it my enter key, something like that. Actually, let's jump over to profiles first. So I have some uh, modifications set up. Uh, let's just create a new one with nothing and we'll select it, we'll switch to it and you'll notice I have nothing Profiles are pretty useful if you want to create multiple profiles for certain like development work or something, or maybe someone needs to borrow your computer, you can switch to a profile with nothing set up so you don't confuse them uh, with your settings. My main profile is default, so I'm going to keep that one selected. Now if I go back to simple modifications, you have three things set up here. Uh, simple modifications aren't that useful. Uh, complex is where most of my stuff is, but let's go over simple modifications while we're in here. So simple modifications, as I said, are basically going from one key to another key or one key to a function. So you can see I have my right control button set up to increase brightness and my application button set to decrease brightness. So if I press my right control button, it will increase brightness and this one will decrease. So as you can see, simple modifications are pretty simple as it says in the name. Um, also for these simple modifications, you can choose which keyboard you want to set these up with or you can set it up with all devices, which I usually do. I just want all my keyboards to work the same. Uh, next up is function keys. These are your F1 through 12 keys. You can remap them to different keys or different functions. As you can see here, just select the function and switch it up to whatever you want. Uh, if you don't like holding the function key and pushing the F button, you can uh, uncheck this box. And complex modifications, we'll come back here. This is where 99% of your time will be spent. All right, and then devices. This is where you can enable a keyboard and mouse to be intercepted by Car Carabiner. So if you uncheck a box here, Carabiner won't be able to do any of its modifications for that device. And then advanced, here you can disable any keyboard if another one is plugged in. For example, you can disable your internal Mac keyboard if you plug in an external keyboard. So maybe you can set it on top of the you know laptop keyboard and not push any buttons. Virtual keyboard, don't worry about it. Profiles we showed. Miscellaneous, okay, here you check for your update. Updates. always get those beta updates if you want to be cool uh, if you're going to uninstall the app you definitely want to do it here to get it fully removed uh, don't worry about it here you can show your icon in the menu bar if you're into that Just switch your profiles up here their website their github and here you can get the actual location of the configuration files so if you click on that it'll open up and show you where the configuration files are and in a future video we'll be editing this uh, json file this is the main configuration file
If you're having any issues, you can restart uh, the app from here or quit it from here. Uh, really, if you are having any issues, you should go to the log tab here. This will show you red if there's any errors. I don't have any errors, but if I were to update the configuration and something wasn't right, it would show me here and tell me what line and what I need to do. Back to complex modifications. This is the most powerful area of the application. Let me show you a few examples of what I have set up so you can see what it's capable of. Uh, first, the caps lock button is pretty useless uh, unless you're like a genuinely crazy person who types in all caps to get your point across. Uh, but for me, I set it up to be my new hyper modifier key, I guess you could call it. So a modifier key is a key you use to change the normal action of another key when pressed together. For example, if I press S, S is just S. But if I press uh, shift S, it's going to be a capital S. So it modified the S, you know, so it's a modifier key. Uh, you know, command S would usually be save. So we're, we're modifying S. Anyways, caps lock is my new hyper modifier key. And that is going to be a key that actually holds down shift, control, command, alt by holding down caps. So if we look at the event viewer here and I hold down the caps lock key, you'll see that it's actually holding down all of these modifier keys together and then letting them up. So again, my caps lock key is just a key that when I press now, it holds down shift, control, command, option. And now with this new hyper key, I can basically set up all my new custom shortcuts with that hyper key, and I won't be conflicting or clashing with any system or application shortcuts that are already set up. Uh, I also have my caps lock be my escape key, which is kind of cool too. So if I press a uh, caps lock again, you'll see that it does actually trigger the escape key, key down, key up. Uh, this is super useful when I'm in Vim and I want to get out of insert mode. If you don't know what Vim is, don't worry about it. It's not important. Uh, just know that caps lock is also my escape key if I don't press anything else with it. And there's still more that caps lock can do. I have caps lock and space uh, launch Alfred. And one last thing caps lock can do, if I hold it down for one second, it'll launch uh, mission control, which is pretty cool. But you may be thinking to yourself, my caps lock key is gone. How am I gonna scream at people on Facebook? There is also a modification to toggle caps lock by pressing both left and right shift at the same time. Check it out. But that's not all my shift key does. It can also move forward and backward by one word. Check this out. So that's pretty useful for quickly getting through text. All right, and a couple other odd ones. Let's see, Command W, I always hated closing windows on accident when I'm going for like Command S for save. I would always hit Command W, so I just disabled that as you can see. Uh, whenever I hit Command W, the event viewer doesn't show Command W. So I've disabled that. Uh, also on Command Q, sometimes I do want to quit applications with Command Q. I just want to kind of definitely want to do it. So I have to hit Command QQ to close an application like so. So Command Q won't do it, but if I do Command QQ, it will do it. Yay. Uh, one other key I was going to disable is the insert key. I don't think I've actually ever intentionally pressed it uh, on purpose and I always accidentally press it. So I was going to disable it, but instead of disabling it, I made it do this. Can you hear that? And I find the insert key much more useful now. Uh, next, I remap the print screen key to be a screenshot key. Pretty useful. It takes a screenshot of an application. Uh, and if I hold it, it uses a different screenshot application I like to use. So that's useful. My pause button will pause my computer and put it to sleep. That uses Alfred and one of its actions. Uh, if you don't have Alfred, this one will not work for you. And if I hold pause, it'll put my uh, external monitors to sleep, but you can't see that. Uh, one of my favorite modifications is holding the hyper key and using HJKL to be my directional keys. So this is like, if you've used Vim, you know, these are the direction keys for Vim. Um, and I never have to actually, you know, go through text with the stupid arrow keys anymore. So check it out. Got my little cursor here. Uh, so, H will go left, L will go right, J down, and K up. I'm holding the uh, hyper key the whole time while I'm doing this. So, you know, H, J, K, L still work as keys, but if I hold my modifier key, they do a modified version of something. Uh, also, if I want to go to the end of the line, I, I hold uh, colon, and at the beginning of the line, G. So, I can easily navigate through text with, you know, shift I showed you earlier by going word by word 
and then the arrow keys and beginning and end of line. You can set it up however you feel comfortable, but this is how I have mine set up. Uh, and then there's O Launcher. I can't remember where I got this. Maybe their GitHub or something, uh, some dude on there. It's a bit complicated, but it's sort of like setting up your O key as a modifier key. And if it's held down for a particular amount of time and combined with another key on your keyboard, it can launch an application or do anything. So the way I have mine set up is if I wanna launch Visual Studio Code, I'll hold O and C. And you have to hold down O for a specific amount of time. Uh, otherwise it's going to repeat if it's too long or it's not gonna count if it's not long enough. So you can see it still repeats, I can still type. But if I want to get like, um, I also have I term set up to OI, so OI, and then uh, Brave with OB, and then OC, and then I have Notion and a lot of other apps set up. But it's a really quick way to launch an application without even having to use like Alfred to, you know, type in the name. So it's just like OI. Now I have uh, I term focused. Okay, so those are most of the useful things I use Carabiner for, and you may be wondering how you can set those up on your Mac or, you know, create your own. Uh, there's good and bad news there. The good news is you can just go to this website and, you know, search and download whatever you want. Many people have created many cool things. If you search for um, Hyper, the first result will be mine. This is my setup here. And the easiest way to get what I have on my computer is just to click the import button. You need to allow it to open in the uh, Carabiner Elements app. And then click Imports. I've already imported, but whenever you import, let me go to a new profile. Uh, new profile. So now I have no complex modifications. Now I'm going to click Add Rule and I'm going to collapse all of these. I've downloaded quite a few, but this is the one we just downloaded. So you can enable all, which I do not recommend unless you have all the applications I have on my computer. Uh, for example, Alfred, Keyboard Maestro, stuff like that. You can also delete these that you've downloaded or you can open them and the cool part is you can just enable a specific modification that you like. So let's just do command W to nothing. That's not that useful, but if you click enable, it's enabled that modification for you. And you can add more rules from more people or more of my rules if you're interested. And then we can test it out. So shift should move forward and backward. Let's test that out. Yeah, okay. So that is the easy way to add new modifications here. If you want to create your own modifications or you want to slightly modify these current modifications, you're going to have to jump into the configuration file, which is if you go to miscellaneous and click on open containing folder. This is where your configurations files uh, live and carabiner.json is the file that we care about. This is the one that has all of your configuration in it. If we open that up, this is JSON and I have a few profiles in here, so that's why it's so long. But uh, for people who don't know JSON, it's not that complicated really, but it's not very easy for beginners either. Uh, but this video is gonna be way too long if I go over all this. So I'll be making a part two that'll go over some more advanced stuff and how to create your own modifications. So go ahead and download all my modifications. Go download some new modifications, try them out, see what you like. Uh, next video will be going over how to create your own custom modifications and what goes into that. And again, if things aren't working, you can just go to profiles, create a new profile, maybe call it nothing, switch to it and you'll be back to normal. Uh, and always look at your log section when you're uh, running into any errors. Cool. All right, that's enough for today. In the next video, I'll show you how to create custom modifications and all the advanced features of Carabiner, such as setting up complex modifications for certain applications only, or how to set up how long a long press works, or key up. There's all kinds of stuff. I'll go over that next video. Peace.